The survivors of Mabara are celebrating their first week of independence. Just west of Dili, this was one of the birthplaces of the militia movement. It was neighbours who killed, raped and tortured here throughout 1999 at the bidding of the Indonesian army. The task of reconciliation in a now independent East Timor will be most sorely tested here. Florindo de Jesus Britus played dead when he was attacked by militiamen. His back is so severely hacked that he's too embarrassed to show it to the camera. His right arm is crippled. Florindo's brother was killed in front of him. A particularly painful memory for the whole Britis family this week, as ex-militiamen are being delivered into town for the independence celebrations. If all goes to plan, they'll soon be resettled here. The number of people killed throughout Indonesia's secretive occupation may never be known. Justice is unlikely to be delivered for them. But the slaughter of 1999 is a different case. International investigators have had full access to the crime scenes for two and a half years. Evidence and testimony abounds of Indonesian atrocities, but little has come of it. The full extent of the numbers killed is still concealed, some believe deliberately downplayed, and Indonesia's role is being washed away by the day. His Excellency, President-elect Shanana Guzmão, soon will walk in with President Megawati Sukarno Putri of Indonesia. Shanana Guzmão's almost single-minded desire for reconciliation has effectively ended any international interest in the pursuit of justice here. Guzmão may have the finest of reasons for placating a dangerous neighbour, but the goal of diplomacy and politics, internationally or in Timor, is rarely to reveal the truth. As the UN ends its mission here, primary responsibility for prosecuting Indonesian atrocities in East Timor belongs to the Indonesian justice system. An optimistic arrangement, to say the least, when the criminals we hear that first report. Only, but in the government uh, itself. I don't know what the, what the boys feel, but I feel like I'm going to throw up. Just a few kilometers from the Pakistan border, US soldiers fire into the night. We're in contact here every day. We have intelligence on the enemy every day. We have uh, visual on them every day. But our story never gets out. Um, our story is always kind of put on the back burner. For this group, the prospect that Indonesia will prosecute any of its own is a farce. Many now suspect that the new government will push no harder than the UN did to reveal the truth about what happened here. An accusation that Ramos Horta is getting increasingly prickly about. Well, uh, some people uh, uh, enjoy uh, the feeling that they have an exclusive truth on what is right and what is wrong. They have the monopoly on uh, virtues. Uh, they would like us, the only statement that would satisfy them, if uh, we make uh, very loud uh, statements uh, about the War Crimes Tribunal, for instance. Mm. We have said time and again that uh, justice has to be delivered, but if the Indonesian side itself 
carries out justice and is seen to be fair, uh, then justice is served. The Indonesian system is no more likely to serve the interests of justice today than it was in 1999. Then, the priority of its government and army was to destroy evidence, and the principal evidence being bodies. Journalist John Martinkus saw the same pattern emerge after the referendum that he'd witnessed throughout the previous year. At the time when um, the evidence was most widely available, like, um, like say down in Sawai, you know, you went down there, there's blood on the ground, there's bits of human hair, hair everywhere, there's bits of clothing, there's um, personal possessions covered in blood scattered everywhere. It's obvious that, you know, something very bad has happened here and, um, and and, as the witnesses said themselves, the Indonesian military came and drove them away in trucks after they'd been as killed. A, as a clean-up operation. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And and the same thing happened in Maliana, and the same thing was happening in Dili, even as Interfed arrived. Because, um, bear in mind, for the first couple of days, Interfed only had the airport and that little area around the trees and the port. And, in my mind, um, that was one of the reasons why the Dutch journalist, Sander Tones, was killed... Um, for straying up to Bukori, he was killed by the Indonesian military, and that's been you know, thoroughly established. Um, because um, they didn't want journalists running around, they didn't want people finding out um, the extent of what had happened um, before they had finished tidying it up. When Australian-led Interfet troops arrived in September 1999, they developed a policy of only commenting on bodies found. No comments were ever made about evidence of body disposal, nor any comment about the involvement of Indonesian forces in the killings, despite ample first-hand accounts. It really was um, to give Indonesia the diplomatic sidestep they needed to avoid responsibility for their actions, which is why they formed the militias in the first place. And, um, and that, that falsehood um, and that devolution of responsibility is still um, happening today and that's why the justice issue has been shunted to the side um, because nobody really wants to go after um, the perpetrators because it would lead right to the top of um, Indonesian society and um, the East, Timor East Timorese leadership um, either believe that um, in order to have a nation or a small nation alongside a powerful Indonesia, that's what they have to do. They have to lie on their behalf. During five months of Interfet control, the official death toll slowly crept up to about 250, where it remained for the rest of the year when the UN authority took control and maintained the policy of commenting only on retrieved bodies. Well, I know probably how many graves there are in Lakeisha, but I'm afraid that, that I'm not under the UN sanction. I'm not allowed to tell you that. While the world was making judgments about whether to pursue Indonesian officials and soldiers for their crimes, those judgments were being based on ludicrously low numbers that stretched from 100 to 250 dead. No mention was made of those dumped at sea or dragged across the border. Jokum Fonseca is a director of Yayasan Huck, the most prominent legal aid and human rights group in East Timor. He represents families of the missing and the dead. Jokum has virtually stopped bothering passing over any files to UN investigators and has little confidence that things will change with an independent government. Well, it's now an independent nation, but um, who amongst the politicians have any interest in this. No. no. That is why our message is clear to the family of victims and survivors. Under the current circumstances, under the current setting, the law is touching no one. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, as an acquisition with the family of victims is to, to let them know that this is the reality. Mm. Let's not uh, be romantic about the situation. The Security Council has said time and again, the Secretary General has said time and again, that we must give a chance to the Indonesians to bring 
Uh, Just say, do you, do you believe the Indonesians are going to do it? I mean, it's not a question of me believing, you know. Uh, it is, I just don't think that it is proper for anyone when a court is taking place that we start pass judgment on the judges, on the prosecutors, and so on. Uh, I'm not an activist. Maybe it's easy for an activist, for a journalist to, uh, to do that. A court is a court. The people of Nobara have shown extraordinary faith in the promises that have been made to them for the past two and a half years that reconciliation and justice would be delivered together. At this safe house just behind the main street, three militiamen are reintegrating into Mubara during the independence celebrations. The last time they were here, they were burning it to the ground. <laughs> This man was a commander of a militia unit and admits that men in his unit killed people in this area. He's prepared to talk about it in exchange for his safety and freedom. The few prosecutions that have occurred are of Timorese militiamen in Timorese courts. But those cases are rare and are likely to remain so while Shanana continues to try to entice militias and their families to return from Indonesia. The two younger men claim to have never seen a single killing or even assault in their eight months with the militias. They haven't returned to give evidence they returned when they heard the message of amnesty and forgiveness, a policy that will enable them to return to their home village soon. And what is that process? How, how does that happen? And, and when, when do you find that out? At the other end of this small town, the British family are dealing with the return of the militias. When the militia movement began here at the beginning of 99, Florindo and his brother fled to Dili along with hundreds of others from Mubara. They took refuge here at the house of Manuel Carascalao. Hundreds of victims of beatings, rape and torture were sheltering here when the militias came to Dili. It was a massacre at the hand of some of their own neighbours. So you, you went to Manuel Crescola's house? Went to Sir Ambat. How many can you have a name of Sirasona and Avisuman one money? I mean, I told you to go back to the cyber morulet and Amrikel and Morulet and the place. Take Basiro Hotia, Eduardo, Joan, Antonino, Sirah Craig, Bush and Gamelet and or sira tu saya mah hari kali kami nento lu ya moru lete. Ya istirahat kami. Kami amri kebesi kami kereta tu setulah setulah kami. And you watched as the people were killed? Tahu lah hari. Tambah tambah malam. Tambah malam. Tambah malam. Mm-hmm. And were there dead people at this point, or were there people jumping the fence? 
Emang harus sih cai usia malang kan bisa. Sir saya memang dia no emang mati lah ya larang ya emang mati kan. Thirteen bodies were retrieved from the house and grounds, most of them from Mubara, but at least another forty people are still missing, and no body means no chance of justice. Sindi bana ni sana ni larang ni kani ke elam, ini tatu larang kani ko tu mai biar atu alu buat atu bersiram lah beli tambah itu ni nasi ni mas ihal buat ni larang leh ini. The death toll quoted in the first 12 months after the carnage was so low that officials and journalists more recently began referring to a thousand dead. But even this may be a fraction of the truth. Shanana Guzmao has never disputed these widely quoted figures, nor, to the best of my knowledge, has Ramos Horta since Interfet and the UN began their investigations. The, the, figure, the figure I have heard and I have used ranges from, and because I cannot say a precise figure, ranges from 1,000 to 10,000. That's my personal belief. Look, I might be misinformed, but this is news to me to hear you saying that it's up to 10,000. I mean, this has been well, a critical issue. In the international media, it's been a critical issue. I don't... Uh, I say it could be as high as 10,000. I said it before. Uh, I don't remember when, and I remember having been uh, quoted. But uh, it is, you know, an absolutely wild guess. If the Indonesian army learned anything in East Timor, it was a lesson in how to escape the judgment of either the law or history. Leave no bodies behind. An accusing finger points from this grave, but proper graves are rare in East Timor. He was assassinated, assassinated barbarically, barbarically yeah, from by monstrous, monstrous militias. militias. They cut his, his neck and take out his tongue. The story of the rest of the dead may never emerge. What monsoonal rains haven't destroyed, two and a half years of disinformation and silence probably has. <laughs>